Chachapoyas is an ancient city, once effortlessly mingled among the mountains of northern Peru. At an elevation of 2,335 meters, it is still an inhabited location that was once the home of a little-known or indeed understood enigmatic civilization known as the Cloud People. Situated in the mountains far from the Peruvian coast, although this didn't apparently stop them somehow creating elaborate jewelry from seashells, Chachapoyas remains extremely isolated to this day. Only ever accessed by enthusiastic hikers, adventurers, and airlifted scientists, it is a site like many others we have covered which dot our planet, that, through our own research, has been revealed to have a contradictory explanation for their construction. Indeed, these sites are dated too, and subsequently tagged to convenient culprits. We have not only found compelling evidence to suggest that this most isolated, once thriving location is one of the oldest pre-Incan relics anywhere in Peru, but that the datings of such sites is often a funded conspiracy rather than a reality. Los Pinchudos is an elaborate Chachapoya tomb complex molded into a high rock face. It is a natural and cultural World Heritage Site and is guarded 365 days of the year and closed off to all except specific scientific exploration. What is remarkable about the site is the fact that the wooden statues marking the tombs have mysteriously survived the ages. These statues were used by academia to date the site. However, although the explanation for the statue's survival is apparently, quote, an arid climate, end quote, the actual site displays evidence of a far greater antiquity than these timber ghosts. Wooden artifacts rarely survive the humidity found within the Peruvian mountains, and although scientists attribute the figure's preservation to the site's location in an arid climate, the site, when discovered, was in such disrepair, an emergency conservation effort was launched to save it from further erosion. Many believe that the tombs would have been lost completely without church and Peruvian conservador Ricardo Morales Gamara, who restored the eroding foundations. The clay and stone tombs of the complex also have wooden roofs and have surviving Inca paint in red, yellow, black, and white. We feel, due to the other compelling evidence that has been gathered and subsequently shared upon our channel, Along with the extensive erosion found at many of the sites attributed to the Chachapoyas, that there may be a high chance that the wooden roofing and statues commemorating the graves may have been another conservation effort, performed by people placed more recently within history. People modern academia claim as the original builders. Is it possible that with the extensive erosion evident at the site, in contrast to the highly preserved and seemingly recent wooden monuments and protective roofing, that we are actually looking at more than two building phases upon these tombs? An original construction, followed by a later Incan conservation effort, and then a modern correction? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. In the past, whenever an artifact or ancient ruin was to rear its unexplainable head, Funded parties would scramble to quickly rebury them within museum archives or to simply ignore and not publicly share such discoveries. As such, many of the sites that we cover here upon our channel are not only notoriously difficult to track down and study, but are also very often unfamiliar to our many viewers. One continues their way through the same journey as you and I by perusing the many subjects we have already covered. The feelings of confusion as having never been confronted with said locations and data therein actually becomes a sense of predictability and a symptom of a much larger conspiracy. As we push on with more and more sites and artifacts, further compounding the proof of this cover-up and deepening our evidential arsenal, Regarding this ignored and in some cases suppressed history upon our planet, it is inevitable that sooner or later the movement will indeed begin to move. And this is our mission. The Inga Stone, 
located in the middle of the Inga River in Paraiba State, northeast of Brazil, an artifact like any other which has an unexplained and possibly controversial history is little known to the world. It is a rock formation which covers an area of approximately 250 meters squared. However, upon this enormous rock is an unknown language with, quite possibly, an untold story. 46 meters long and 3.8 meters high, there are etchings made all over this stone whose meanings, although extensively studied by some of the best minds on the planet, remain unknown and undeciphered. Several figures are carved in low relief, illustrations of animals, fruits, and human constellations like Orion and our very own Milky Way can be seen. Scholars presume that it was created by natives that lived in the area until the 18th century, although any compelling evidence to support this claim has yet to surface. Thought to depict animals, fruits, weapons, humans, possible ancient aircrafts or birds, and what appears to be a table of contents, with stories divided into sections with each symbol connected to the number of a chapter, what it says is not known. Ignatius Rolum, professor of Greek and Latin theology, argued the symbols were similar to ancient Phoenician carvings, while others felt the symbols were related to ancient ruins. An additional popular hypothesis is, of course, ancient aliens, since the Inga's symbols were so different to any others found. Some researchers, such as Claudio Quintans of the Parabeno Center of Ufology, has postulated that a spaceship landed in the Inga area during this ancient time, and the symbols were probably drawn by these extraterrestrial guests. An incredible stone, with a history we may one day unravel. The Great Pyramids of Giza – undoubtedly some of the most incredible ancient monuments to be found anywhere on Earth. Just how old are these structures? 4,000 years? 10,000 years? 100,000 years? We recently uncovered the astonishing megalithic blocks once exposed upon the east side of Cheops. Blocks which indicate that the entire skeletal structure of the pyramid is actually made with blocks similar to those found at Baalbek. 100 plus ton blocks, revealed at some point within antiquity, most likely done by a jealous ruler in an attempt to destroy and conceal the evidence of this past, more capable civilizations were. Additionally, humans are curious creatures. Not only do we now suspect that destructive phases have befallen the great structure throughout its long life on Earth, but also, like we do today, has also before experienced being marveled at, and conservation efforts in the form of more modern casting stones have been installed, these blocks initially obstructing our view of the seemingly impossible blocks which make up its inner structure. Is there any proof to support such claims of an enormous age to be found anywhere else on Earth? Peru, a place which contains the same uncannily designed impossible pre-Incan architecture. Within the Supi Valley, some 120 miles north of Lima, is the Pyramid of Caral. Now claimed to be the oldest pyramid on Earth, and the clear erosion which it has experienced clearly makes it an obvious candidate for this title of incredible antiquity, once towering into the heavens, now virtually leveled by erosion over many, many millennia. This site has clearly received no later attention by a capable or interested civilization, left to rot with the overgrown mountains of Peru. Yet it possesses such similarities in architecture with ancient Mesopotamia, China, India, and indeed Egypt, is it now so unforgivable to suspect that all of these structures were actually built by the same civilization at the same time within history? The only difference being that the well-known and documented Egyptian civilization later moved in on the specific pyramidal structures of Giza for power purposes, while the Inca focused in on the ancient architectural land terracing. Interestingly, and yet more compelling, evidence supports previous hypotheses here on the channel. When Paul Kosak discovered Corral in 1948, 
it received little attention because it appeared to lack any historical artifacts. An unusual absence of any habitational evidence usually sought at archaeological sites. Could this be due to the sheer age of these monuments? That all but the remaining gigantic stones has simply eroded away? Corral is not the only pyramid to be found within Peru. There are many more which share the same evidence of great age. Near the city of Saipan is the largest pyramid concentration in southern America, known as the Pyramids of Tucumi, or the Valley of the Pyramids. It has no less than three pyramid cities, which together have a stunning total of 250 pyramids. Tucumi lies on the southern margin of the valley and is surrounded by fertile agricultural land, thanks to the Tami Canal, which brings water northwards from the Chanke River, a perfect strategic location for a once flourishing civilization. Who were these people? When did they live? Thanks to ongoing research, not only is the officially upheld story surrounding such cities crumbling, but we are now getting closer and closer to finally answering these questions. Ollante Tabo, probably one of the most visually perplexing sites within Peru, claimed to be that of the Incas and at an altitude of 2,792 meters above sea level. Once one takes a good look at this place, it becomes near impossible to believe that the Incan civilization, with their access to such limited technologies, could have created such a place. During the Inca Empire, Ollante Tabo was the royal estate of Emperor Pacacuti. According to academia, when he conquered the region, he built the town and the ceremonial center within. It is such an impressive, perfectly placed strategic structure that, at the time of the Spanish conquest, it served as a stronghold for Manco Inco Yupanqui, leader of the Inca resistance. However, as mentioned many times on our channel, how could a civilization create such astonishing architecture at such an early time within known history? How did they create some of these sites? What purpose could they have served? Some of the ruins that can be found in Peru, and in particular Ollante Tambo, you cannot help but wonder if, for example, the giant stairs carved into the hillside were intended for human use, then why create them to such enormous scales? According to the history books, around the mid-15th century, the Incan emperor Pacacuti conquered Ollantaytambo, including the surrounding region. All were incorporated into his personal estate. The emperor then claims to have rebuilt the town with sumptuous constructions and undertook extensive harassing and masterfully irrigating the Urubamba Valley, notably without any prior knowledge of these techniques known of. Were these giant ledge steps once used by giants? Or possibly, had a use similar to the ancient site known as Moray. Moray also claimed to be Incan. This mind-boggling site had an astonishing purpose. It seems the builders of this enormous structure were masters of horticulture. They had somehow figured out that by creating these raised ledges at particular angles to the seasonal winds and sun, using this to slowly acclimatize plants previously not suitable to that climate over many generations. Perhaps this is what Oliente Tambo was used for. Moray is little shared by academia. Indeed, its existence and one's function is difficult to explain with modern paradigms. And although not giants, we feel the site's once use was no less impressive. Homes Towns, religious structures, an entire living infrastructure of a once highly successful, highly capable people. Managing to expertly fuse their existence harmoniously with the surrounding environment, creating structures which left little, if any, impact on the surrounding landscape, structures still usable even to this day. Located within Abanque, a province in the region of Apurimac, Sehuite has been conveniently dated to the period of the Incan Empire between the 15th and 16th centuries AD. However, like many sites dotted around Peru, and indeed the world, an explanation as to how these cultures achieve such wonders with such primitive access to construction or tools is not forthcoming. 
Compared to other Incan sites, Sehuite is also a complete ruin, leading the more observant, and indeed the free-thinking, self-funded geologist among us to suspect that it may actually be even older than the pre-Incas responsible for Machu Picchu. Yet the most noteworthy object at Sehuite, and the reason for our video, is its monolith. A mysterious boulder drenched in intricate, purposely placed carvings. Interestingly, the word Sehuite originated from the Quechua word Sehueta, which translates as place of orientation. The site is located on the top of a terraced hill. Dedicated research has also revealed that the site was once home to an enclosed sanctuary. Yet all that remains of this sanctuary today is a few leveled platforms and the monolith. It contains more than 200 geometric and zoomorphic figures, including reptiles, frogs, felines, topographical hydraulic models, complete with terraces, ponds, rivers, tunnels, and irrigation channels. The functions or purposes of the stone are not academically known, yet others suspect it was a map of the once existing complex created by a culture able of moving tremendous weights and carving stone with relative ease. Researcher Dr. Arlen Andrews Sr. believes the monolith was used as a scale model to design, develop, test and document the water flow for public water projects, and to teach ancient engineers and technicians the concepts and practices required. Quote, the rock was edited several times with new material, either altering the paths of the water or adding routes altogether. End quote. Clearly a remarkable artifact left by a remarkable civilization. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Tambo Machai is an ancient site located within Peru that, like so many others within this remarkable landscape, clearly demonstrates a level of sophistication within its stonework unquestionably far out of the reaches of those who are academically claimed to have been the builders of these remarkable sites. It is a site that not only possesses the same mind-boggling methods of polygonal masonry, as that of Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman, among many others, but also exhibits an excellent example of the levels of refinement that also went into the building of the irrigation systems throughout the area. Systems that, although unimaginably old, still function perfectly to this day. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding this area, even eclipsing these astonishing feats of ancient engineering, is an area in particular which exhibits some of the most perplexing peculiar feature to be found anywhere in ancient Peru. This area of stone is not merely vitrified, but was, at some point within the distant past, turned to lava. With the limited investigations available, predictably none of which undertaken by funded academics, it has been revealed that this mysterious event did not occur as one would have presumed from a heating from above, but from beneath, or perhaps from within the center of the stonework, successfully melting the stone wall in its entirety into a pool of liquid magma. And although largely overlooked by tourists, and indeed academics alike, the evidence of the stone having once turned to liquid is undeniable. The question then, what turned this stone to liquid? Was it some form of weapon? Or perhaps, is this evidence to suggest how polygonal walls were once built? Perhaps these as yet unexplained polygonal walls were constructed with such precision due to a past ability of its builders, able to melt and shape these stones prior to placement. Or perhaps, could this melted stone be evidence of a war? One that occurred between the inhabitants of these ancient ruins and an unknown entity, ultimately resulting in their demise. Perhaps being the reason why these highly advanced, highly capable ancient people from these civilizations not only mysteriously disappeared, but left many a quarry amid ancient stonework seemingly abandoned, left where we find them today. In another area of the world, far away from Peru, there also exists compelling evidence of such a war having actually once taken place with a possible entity from above. Eerily, this site is claimed as the remnants of a battle with God, specifically surrounding the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Sulfur balls embedded among the landscape at this specific site is undoubtedly compelling evidence to support these accounts of war. A holy war, undertaken at this specific location, that regardless of holy scripture, was fought with a foe of considerable ability. Exclusively found at these sites are white, pure sulfur balls embedded in the mortar that now, due to their tremendous age, are slowly turning to powder. The sulfur found at these sites has also, intriguingly, been tested from 93% to as high as 98% pure sulfur, with trace metals such as magnesium found within that would have produced astounding heat, easily capable of melting stainless steel and indeed the stones within Peru. Furthermore, the brimstone found is significantly different to sulfur found elsewhere, almost as if this brimstone was specifically designed. For example, sulfur from within natural geothermal regions is yellow in crystal form. We find all these evidential factors highly compelling. Peru is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown of ancient sites that can be found all throughout the world. Not only does it contain some of the most astonishing as yet unexplained polygonal masonry to be found anywhere, but it also contains many other anomalous, advanced features built with such precision and prowess they are still utilized by modern-day man. Irrigation systems still flow with fresh water, as if they were built yesterday, still providing water to the local residents who reside in these mountainous areas. Agricultural technologies, utilized by our more modern ancestors, the Incas, undoubtedly aiding in the flourishing of their culture. It is a place that possesses such advanced features, academia can merely resign themselves to a limited close explanation of such wonders as merely identified as pre-Incan. This without any explanation as to how these ancient groups, who predate those who they have studied in depth, were aware of such advanced, elegant solutions to farming, water sourcing, building, and many other miraculous techniques for survival, among these notoriously inaccessible cliffs throughout the Inca Trail. However, deep within the Andes, far away from the well-worn tourist routes, is possibly one of the most perplexing ancient ruins of them all. Known as Napahuaca, it is a rock-cut ruin that is seemingly placed alone in a place of no initially obvious significance, no indication that it was linked to any existing pre-Incan ruin, yet the precision and indeed obvious effort that went into the creation of this anomalous artifact is undeniable. Carved into the mountainside, strongly reminiscent of false doors, features that can be found among many ancient ruins around the world, that according to numerous ancient legends, were used by spirits to enter and exit the realm of the living. It is intricately designed, features smooth, seemingly laser-cut surfaces, which in regard to its dating is nothing short of astonishing. Found at an altitude of nearly 3,000 feet above sea level, it contains many baffling features, which may indicate why this seemingly inconspicuous location was selected. The ceiling and floor of the cave entrance, for instance, not only appear as if it was hewn with laser-like precision, but were also carved at two precise separate angles, one of 60 degrees and another of 52 degrees. These angles, intriguingly, are also found within the Great Pyramids of Giza at numerous locations. Furthermore, whoever constructed this possible false door somehow picked the only spot upon the mountain that contained traces of a mysterious blue stone. This blue stone, only found within this specific spot, has for many years been utilized within modern technology for its unique characteristic for its piezoelectric properties, a type of crystal capable of generating an electrical charge, used by radio manufacturers for many decades within receivers. The rock chosen for the specific location of the carving is also, intriguingly, magnetic in nature. What's more, if one travels exactly halfway around the world to the UK, 
The false door aligns perfectly with Stonehenge. Why was this false door created? How was it created with such precision? What tools were utilized by ancient man to achieve these feats of ancient engineering? Why was it placed at this specific location, a place that has been discovered to contain mysterious blue crystals with unique electrical properties? Is this false door, like many alternative researchers have postulated, a portal of some kind? Allowing the teleportation of an ancient advanced civilization? We find the location, the precision involved, and indeed, the other intriguing characteristics surrounding this mysterious anomaly highly compelling.